for you. I do. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Oh, and Sean, can you start the live transcript too? I can. Thanks. The live transcription is on. Thank you. So, hi, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to March 9th, 10th. Um, I'll share my screen here. I don't have a ton of things today. So I, I had three things and other people can add to the agenda as well. Um, and Shoya, I'm glad that you're here as well. Um, just with respect to translation. So as you know, um, as you know, we have our metrics release in process right now. And I think everything is all set with the translation. So I think all metrics are good to go as specified in the translations repo. So um, thanks for everybody for getting that done. Um, one of the things I did wonder kind of yesterday and today is, is that process for translations working well? Because I feel like, you know, we sometimes we just like make a metric load it into the translations repo and tag it. Um, are there things that could be improved? And I'm asking for a couple different reasons. So if, if you have comments, Shoya, I'd really love to hear them or anybody. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that uh, the translation re repo. I mean, Yehui was just too fast to handle all the metrics. Okay. <laughs> That's the comment being the issue. Um, yeah, but uh, I think um, what uh, Ye Hui or me or Jun uh, going to translate the metrics is still going to like uh, do the manual translate. Um, and I mentioned a tool that can be um, configured in the GitHub repository um, before. And um, we had a student to try, try this in this uh, uh, complete workflow uh, during summer 2020. 21 last year, but it's not uh, going so smooth because that tool only support to uh, translate, uh, like translate all the content um, in issue as an issue comment. So yeah, but the it is still just calls on um, third party uh, translation API. I think it's Google Translation, but uh, it's just support. Um, uh, you, you just need to run a uh, wrong uh, command like uh, translation slash translation in as an issue command and it will translate the uh, content as a new issue command by a robot but that will need um, like when you sub submit the issue you need to paste uh, all the content as a markdown as a markdown format yeah, in the issue party so I'm not sure if this if this is a too heavy workload for um, okay because uh, it may not improve this whole workflow uh, right it just it just support go ahead so just yeah just how you think um, like it would be better or um, is... okay Sean is the translation a, a high enough quality that it saves time in actually performing the translation? Um, because I think when we are going to uh, translate it, we will still um, um, make a machine translation machine to translate it first, um, then to review it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like it. I'm not sure it's... if, I'm not sure how Yehui is doing. So the workflow is a bit odd, but it sounds like it still does a quality enough translation that it's useful to you. So it's, I suppose, up to you whether or not it's useful enough. For, for me, I, I didn't use uh, this translation tools uh, for me because I, I, I actually, I use this trans to, to do it through the whole uh matrix and um, very uh very carefully and uh, to say and if anything i can learn from this matrix you know uh, we haven't got time to to read all the metrics but uh, this translation work would help me to do that okay um 
And also, I, I found that there are at least seven, oh, sorry, uh, at least 10 metrics need to be planned to be released uh, in this time. So uh, I have uh, talked with uh, some people like uh, Ajun and uh, 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 Chen Qi and to say uh, they would like to uh, work, in together with, uh, work together with me to do this translation work. I think they, uh, they will finish that uh, by the end of next week. Okay. That was great. Um, so Yehui and, and Shoya, could I, I'm gonna open an issue in the translations repo that could capture any things that you think might improve the process. Mm -hmm. Just, I'm just curious because part of this process is it, it, I'm not like we don't see all of the translations going on, which is okay. And I'm just, I would love to know what is working well and what isn't working well. So if there are little comments that you could make that might help improve the process, that would be great. So is that, is that all right if I open an issue just to kind of capture any concerns that you might have in the process? Cool. And part of the reason that I ask is one is to try to improve the process, not only for the translation of the translations to Chinese, but it looks like we're going to start translating the metrics into Spanish as well. And so that's going to start getting going and just anything that we could learn from the processes that you had. Um, we're going to try to replicate those for the Spanish translations as well. So that's that's part of the question so we can avoid avoid problems. Well, we, we are already funding some Spanish file to help us to do this translation. Say that again. I'm sorry. So do we already find some kind from Spanish? Uh, we don't help us. we don't fund necessarily fund anybody at this point so we're not this would be kind of the creation of a new group of people a community of people who would be willing to volunteer to do the translations into spanish okay i think the community part is going to be the hardest part <laughs> finding people who you know have an interest in helping do those translations but we're working on it Okay, so maybe I'll give myself an action item. Uh, I remember earlier I received an email from Matt that um, it seems um, someone from Spanish, or, or I'm not sure, is interested in. Uh, so um, is she or he interested in the whole workflow, or she's a mm -hmm. volunteer? She's interested. So that's so it's Sela. It's Sela Yang. And yeah, she's interested in the entire workflow. So yeah, just kind of like how it works on your end. Mm. Okay, I think we can formulate a best practice, but I think the translation part is mostly still manual now. Yeah, that's okay. I may, maybe we should document the best practice, kind of how this process does work, because I don't know that we have this okay. documented totally, so maybe you and I can work on I that. I can work on that. Okay, uh, thanks, Shoya. Maybe. Okay, maybe put under the uh, readme file. That's a good idea. Yep, that would be great. Okay. We, we can put it in the community handbook if only we knew how to update that thing. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh, I think I still get, the, get that account. It's Gitbook. Wait, you have access to that account? The community Yeah, handbook? because I oh. participated in the GSOD before. <laughs> Oh, well, can you help us? Because <laughs> we don't okay. know. How that is. <laughs> Good news. <laughs> can you? I, I I think I need to find that account because I didn't. I haven't log, logged in for a very long time. If you if you find it, can you send it to Elizabeth? Okay. 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 Thank you. 
Oh, all right. That was unexpected. And, <laughs> and also, if you have any pointers on how to get it to actually work, that would be amazing. <laughs> um, oh, I think uh, Gitbook is quite quite easy to get started because it's not like um, GitHub. It's just something uh, like an editor. Uh, yeah, I will find the account first. Thank you. No problem. Well, that was unexpectedly good. Yay, thanks. All right. Um, I just, this should cross my mind. I'm moving on. Anybody else have anything on the translations? All right, cool. Um, I just this crossed my mind. I don't know where this is at. Are there are there any um, plans for future meetups in China with respect to chaos? Uh, actually, we do have a, a plan before the Chinese New Year. That I talked with uh, Xiaoya that we we plan the, uh, a meetup in the early of this year, early half of this year. But uh, you know, uh, currently. Uh, COVID-19 case happened in different city. We couldn't decide which city we can uh, hold on this uh, offline meetup because I, I prefer meet, uh, meet up, hold up as an offline meetup to face to face uh, meet up with each other. So I I mean when the when it's warmer uh, turn into the summer I think and uh, the situation would become better and then we can uh, uh, fix fix out uh, what's the best time for the mint up in China this year. Okay, that makes good sense. And I think like all the other meetups in China, Shoya and Yehoi and anybody else, just let us know and we're happy to help in terms of getting stuff on the website, in terms of helping set the agenda, all that kind of stuff. Great. Okay. Um, moving right along. So I just I wanted to to bring these two metrics models just forward. I know that there's people on this call that have an interest in in these as they participate in the metrics model working group as well. Um, so Emma Emma Irwin at um, Microsoft has been spending time on putting together a couple different metrics models. And I thought we could take a look at them really quickly. She had also posted this in uh, Slack. So there's some messages going on in there in the metrics model channel. So just give you a second to take a look at this. She's building out the template a little bit, which I don't have any problem with, which I think is really actually quite helpful. with a few header changes. So you can just either click on those links or I'll give you a second to just kind of look at this really quickly. I think one of the nice things is this addition of user stories, because we've always kind of struggled with who a metrics model would be for. I think this, kind of helps solve that problem. She gives a couple diff different um, angles as to why you might care about this metrics model. Elizabeth, I think this follows kind of Emma's old, um, those old templates and then how you had used those templates. So just different ways to think about the different metrics that could be used here. So just to clarify, is she suggesting that we include the toolkits as part of the metrics template or would those still be something separate? Or do you know? So I don't know. So, um, so are you talking about just kind of these right here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think this is what's kind of open for discussion at this point. Okay. 
so in the past, the, the, the question here is in the past we had had, we would have a section, at least the way I would see it, we would have a section like this, you know what I mean? Like why it matters. And I think it's even with the old template, we would still have a section. It, this is a nice addition, you know, because we were trying to play around with this a little bit anyway. But in the in the past, we would only list the metrics just one by one that we think constitute the metrics model. And then within the metrics model, we could link out to another document that would be a toolkit. Am I, I see you nodding your head. So this is, I think this is, we're kind of in agreement here. So it'd be a link to another document that would be a toolkit that would help you kind of understand how to deploy those particular metrics. Are we going to put them together like, like here? I think there's some kind of toolkit right here. Okay. So you, you, you said you kind of like it here in the, in the model itself. Yeah. Yeah, it uh, would reduce the cost of maintaining the two documentations. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth, what are your thoughts? I, I kind of envision, um, I'm trying to think how to say this properly. Um, but so like issue responsiveness is, um, is, is a piece of this giant one called the response, just general responsiveness, right? Issue responsiveness is the atomic metric that we're pulling from, Perfect. right? Okay. So my only, my only problem with putting it in this model is instead of pulling it out and making it a separate toolkit is that if we are using that same atomic metric in multiple models and something changes from that metric, we would have to change it everywhere instead of just the one toolkit for that atomic metric. Okay, modularity. Cool. I also pray for your solution. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, and that's that's. Because I'm also thinking. I asked a similar question. Uh, I mean, the related to to the database this one. Because I'm thinking, how to implement the, the this. Uh, metrics model. Are we going to give the code about data collection and data analysis and the visualization implementation? Or are we just showing the, the, the basic steps, how to, how to implement it? I, I'm not sure in the toolkit. We, are we going to only show this example as this auger link or Bitger link? I'm not sure. Uh, it depends. I think this one's an auger link. Yeah. So maybe the, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead Elizabeth. <laughs> I was just going to say, I think that's an excellent question, Yuhoi. Like, how deep do we go in these toolkits? How much information do we provide? And we have, like, the toolkits that we've made so far have not required actual software to pull the data. So, um, but I think that's an excellent question we need to sort out. So then, I mean, we'd potentially have in this scenario, three documents. One would be this document, the metrics model document that explains things like why it matters, the user stories and the associated metrics. We'd then have another document that would be the toolkit for how to deploy, for example, pull, requ pull request responsiveness. Right? Am I, so far, so good. And then we'd have a third document, which in the case of Augur would be a Jupyter notebook, which would be the actual deployment of, like based on this toolkit. Is that right? So I don't want to get wacky. Um, but there is a thought that we could store this information in a database and then pull, make make it a dynamic document that's created on the fly. So someone would, in theory, say, "Oh, I want to, I want to, I want to figure out responsiveness." Okay, now what do I need? And it would automatically pull those modules, those toolkits that we've linked to that metrics model, and then that would be their that would be their document. 
And then from there, we could also link out the different instructions or, or Jupyter notebooks, but keep those separate so that if they change, they will have to change them in one place. And the actual document that's created is the dynamic part of it. That's a crazy idea. I like, I mean, I think it makes it's, sense. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it's, uh, it's doable with a little bit of work. Essentially, we'd be componentizing the pieces of the metrics model that we built for illustration purposes and additional components so that they just get assembled on the fly, I think is what you're saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. That's a cool idea. So these, the, basically these boxes would be dynamically created for, for all intents and purposes. Is that right? Yeah. So like, if you think of, you know, you're, um, you're putting a, a, a gift basket together and you want to be able to decide, you know, they'll give you some recommendations of here's what we usually put in this gift basket. Um, but it's created, you know, based on your own specifications and your, what you want to see as well. So there would be a lot of room for customization. Um, if we could do it on the fly like that, it would, I think it would make it way more uh, of a sustainable uh, framework than just keep creating more and more documents that we have to go back and make sure that they're all up to date all the time instead of just being able to do it in one place. Do other people have thoughts on this as well? Well, I really the like the discussion idea, happening think... on Friday together with this. Oh, go ahead, Yohoi. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I just remember the last discussion happened last Friday together with you and uh, and Singh and uh, and Daniel about this uh, software platform. Uh, I think yeah. I think we mentioned a little bit about this. So it's yes. Uh, it, each of the implementation of this uh, uh, matrix could uh, could uh, treat it as a component. We can deploy it on the on this software platform. We can integrate it mm -hmm. as a, as a matrix model, and use yeah. it. Yeah. Yes, I think we for the ones that are uh, a data analysis, we would ideally have a piece of software that works for either ultimately Grimoire Lab or Augur. <clears throat> and we want to build some metrics models examples in Grimoire Lab as well. For the things that are surveys, I think we need some kind of new workflow as well as for observations where we give people kind of a systemic way, a systematic way of gathering the observation information and gathering the survey data. So those are different kinds of tools, but I think I think you would want to make like, when you run the psychological safety survey, I would think you would just wanna be able to click on that and implement a survey that's already kind of pre-organized based on whatever we determine are the psychological safety questions. So I was just gonna say, I really, I really like Elizabeth's idea of making these dynamically generated. I think the bit that we're gonna to need to be careful about how we design it is because just, um, so putting stuff into a database is fundamentally um, more challenging because of access requirements and things than just submitting a full request or updating a document. So we just need to think about how we're going to manage that that access request and make and make sure that we're not because I could see us easily getting in a situation where all of a sudden Sean is the only person who can update the database or you know whoever's name insert insert a name here yep. because they've sort of designed it and they they set it up and it's easy for them. Um, but I think we need to think about how we make this more scalable so that more people can, you know, push updates to the database, whether there's some workflow around it and you're not, hit, you know, not doing it in the database directly. I don't know exactly how to do that. I just think we just, we just want to be careful about how we do it. So we're not, we don't get in a situation where we're, we're relying on, you know, just one or two people to make all of the updates to that database. I have a lot of ideas and thoughts about this, so um, we can take it offline. But if anybody wants to talk about this, I'm happy to do that because I have I have ideas. Sweet. Sure, I, I would like to join this discussion. That's for me. <clears throat> you get that, Elizabeth? Yohei wants to also be part yeah. of it. Yeah. Okay. That'd be awesome. 
uh, and also because we uh, you know from from my uh, from our community like open ruler and uh, and and man sports on this community we are doing this uh matrix model implementation using the different software like Grim Lab and any other tools so uh, we can do this a little bit something like a tryout in my in, in my own community to do it to see how it works and uh, to see what's the dip, most the difficulty things we met uh, during the you know to try out That'd be great. Thank you, Yoi. Um, I guess maybe two comments. One for, for me. One is it's, it's, this is really it. I really like this solution because it it does ultimately, from a user perspective, keep everything in a single document. <laughs> like like here, <laughs> you want a metric yeah. model? Here are your things. And however it gets created on the back end is not the concern of the user. So I really like that. Yeah. Um, keep it then, mysterious. Yeah, you, mysterious. yeah the, well then they just have like in theory again like this is like a, a pdf that could be printed out or a pdf that could just be shared as a single doc that could move through an organization as opposed to oh here are the three things you need to put this together you keep them straight <laughs> it just it's invariably going to fall apart if we have three different documents i'm afraid so this i think that overcomes this um the second thing is is more just kind of a, a reflection from myself as to how it's just kind of a thank you, like how much time and effort goes into thinking about metrics models <laughs> and how we how we present them and just all of the connected parts to them. It's that it's not just as simple as here's the model name, here are the metrics, you know, done. We have we now have these these um these user stories that we've added at the top, which I really think helps provide context. Um, we have these these tables now that I also kind of help think with deployment. And we're also thinking about, as Sean pointed out, whether it's a survey that is made available, that's an actual implementation of this, or a Jupyter notebook, that's an actual implementation of this. We're starting to give people kind of artifacts to, to deploy these. So, and just the amount of time and effort that goes into thinking through that. Um, so thank you. Those are my two comments on that. All right. Um, any other, did anybody capture this in the? Um, no. I'm still, I'm a bit curious, hmm. lack of imagination about how that Jupyter like. It, um, would it be an online environment for uh, like work as a playground for anyone? interested um, to explore um, exploring explore explore uh, implementing this metric this metrics model. I think so. I, I don't know if I caught all of your comments, Shoya, but if the comment was if the plan is to make this an online online platform that's available to people to explore the models and potentially deploy the models? Was that, was that your question? Um, yeah, because I, um, I didn't catch um, the uh, Jupyter part, how um, maybe, yeah, I'm really uh, look, looking forward how, um, about how it Okay, again, you cut out a little bit at the end, but I think the answer is yes. I mean, the goal is to, I think working with Kevin as part of the website deployment is to create a knowledge bank, base, whatever it's called, um, where people can actually interact a little bit more dynamically with the things that we're creating, not just through a long list on the slash metrics page or just a long list on the metrics page. So I think the goal is to create um, something that people can interact with more dynamically to get access to these models, for example, to get access to the notebooks that would be deployed alongside the models. So I, I hope I'm answering your question or comment. So the metrics model um, will serve as a document in the Jupyter notebook or um, some data provided that people can explore. 
Oh, I see your question. So Sean, Sean I might defer that to you, like kind of how you, this is also kind of the next step, like how we, if we make the model available mm -hmm. and we have these toolkits also that are available <laughs> and there's a deployed notebook available, mm -hmm. like how do we make it so that people can get their own stuff? Yeah, kind of interact with, with it in their own, in their own environment. I, I do for Augur, I do have a Google Summer of Code project outlined for those steps for because it would require a hosted solution with access and entitlements where you'd be able to configure users and and that's a high level view of that project <clears throat> from a grimoire lab perspective i think that the important thing would be if if you have some level of need that's beyond what is available in in their cauldron tool then you might have a dis you know it might lead you to a discussion with grimoire lab um, i think what we would do is make all of the metric model pieces available to people um, automatically with either tool for and they kind of are in, in many respects already available on the Biturgia chaos data website and the auger chaos data website so so it's just making making that sort of more coherent and cohesive in terms of presentation, but to get your own data, I think that's a, it's a hosted solution process for Augur and it's a development process for, in terms of a, if you really have a substantial number of repos that you want to see, <clears throat> I think, I think there's maybe some level or number of repos at which we could automatically construct a, a Grimoire lab instance. But I haven't looked into that. Yeah, I, I plan to talk to Daniel about it later this month. Now I get this interactive part. Looking yeah. <laughs> All right. This is extremely helpful. Thank you, everybody. Um, I mean, honestly, at this point, we have the the safety, the project safety metrics model that Emma was also working on. I, Honestly, I think the questions, the discussion that we've been having to this point is just going to be essentially the same. And I think in the metrics model working group, we can actually focus a little bit more on the content of the model itself. Um, so I, I don't know that we need to go through that. Uh, all right. Are there any other comments with respect to metrics models? I think we made really good progress today. This is great. All right. Good. All right. Oh, also, yeah, ahead, yeah. I I have small concerns regarding to the name of uh, the metrics models, especially the project safety, because when I look at this name, I I was expecting something like um, avoiding vulnerabilities, or is my license the right one? Um, Maybe that is more close to the security, but um, I think um, the safety here um, in this document means um, more like community safety and the diversity by DEI section of it. So I'm not sure if um, um, if uh, it's I better guess, to yeah. add yeah. like um, yeah psychological safety or community safety community participating safety, <laughs> something like that. I think that point is well taken. I would use psychological safety because I think that's a fairly well recognized okay. term in industry versus versus community. But I, I agree with Joe, yeah, it, it it almost seems like like it could be security or something. Like safety is a broad word that could mean a lot of different things. I think that's a really good point, Shoya. Yeah. yeah, especially when I see the document title is project safety. Mm -hmm. Just fix things on the fly. <laughs> uh, but, but for me, the safety, the safety is, a, is a personal feeling, right? When, when somebody joins join the community and security is, a, you know, somebody, you know, protect some, something from, from bad thing happened. So it's like code security or a project security. Yeah, so 
I think um, psychological safety is great. All right. So noted. Thank you. The only, no, I think we have a metric that is called psychological safety. So that's all. Like, just something to think about. I don't know if we have metrics that are the same name as a metrics model. You know what I mean? That's all. Oh. Can... So psychological safety is already a metric. Yeah. Maybe let me just, I'll just put a note here. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking to make a more um, like focused title, but I spell it right the first time. Um, okay. All right. I think something to think about. All right. Good. Thank you, Shoya. Thank you, Don. Um, any other comments on on the models? Again, I think like the details of the models. We'll take a look at those in the metrics model working group. Uh, so any other comments, any other comments for this meeting, things that people would like to bring up for the agenda? Silence, going once, going twice. All right, thank you everybody for your time. We always make great progress, I really appreciate it. <laughs> We figured out access to the handbook. I'm looking back at this. This is great. We figured out a database <laughs> that needs to be created. Uh, we made connections, I think, with Shoya and Sela on the translations work. So really just, oh, and, and we know that a China Meetup should be coming perhaps sometime in the summer. So really great stuff. Thank you, everybody. Uh, awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Hey, take care. Bye.